In the last video, we assembled the backbone and a lot has happened since then. So let's go inside and check it out. As you can see, we have the molds up and some rib bands sprung and all of the staging built. So let's walk through the general process of this first and then we can go back and fill in the details of how we got here. <laughs> For those of you that follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you've already seen some pictures of this work. And we've got a lot of questions as to if these are molds or if these are frames and if we're gonna bevel them and what is going on. And part of that confusion is, one, we haven't explained it yet, and two, there are a lot of different ways to build a boat of this size. So we're doing a method called bent frames. So for us, we finish the backbone, we get that stood up, and then we make all of these molds, and once the molds are all made, we level the backbone fore and aft and port to starboard, and then we erect all the molds, and these are just temporary molds. All of these are coming out at some point, and they won't actually be incorporated in the boat, but they're giving us the shape. It's kind of like making a big basket. And then the rib bands get sprung and they go around the molds and they define the shape of the boat fore and aft while the molds define the shape of the boat port to starboard. And as you can see, we have some more rib bands up here and there'll be a couple more that'll go in the middle. They're just not in right now because they're in the way when we go to cut the rabbit. And then our frames will obviously be much bigger than this, but it'll give you the idea. The frames get put into a socket into the keel timber and then they get bent into place and they get bent out against the rib bands. And when they get bent to the rib bands, they end up taking the shape of the molds and the rib bands also put the correct twist or bevel into them. So we don't need to worry about sawing any bevels or planing any bevels. The frames will take that as they go in. Um, the downside of that, doing it this way, is that we have to build all of these molds and all these rib bands that they're just templates they're going to come out another way that some of you maybe are more familiar with is to do sawn frames also known as grown frames where you basically make timbers that look like these molds but are out of actual boat building wood and much heavier and those you cut the bevel into them and if you want to know more about that check out leo sampson who is restoring an old 100 year old sailboat and she has grown frames and leo does a great job of explaining what those are on so we have two very different construction techniques there um, but in the end we both end up with really cool wooden sailboats now that everybody's on the same page and have a general idea of what all this is about and how it's all going to come together Let's uh, take a little trip back in time to when we first started making the molds and we'll go through that process of how we picked up the molds off the lofting floor, how we got them erected on the backbone, how we sprung the rib bands, how we built the staging, uh, how we got from a backbone in the boathouse to what we have now. After milling up a good pile of one inch thick pine boards, we are ready to start constructing the molds. The molds are built according to the frame's view in the plans. Each frame has a lofted curve, which then needs to be mirrored to get the full shape of the hull at that station line. As Steve explained, the molds are simply shapes put in place at each station and then connected laterally with rib bands to determine the shape of the hull when steaming in the frames. The lines are pulled from the lofting floor, but the plans are often drawn to the outside of the planking. Therefore, this needs to be subtracted to get the correct frame size. This is done by swinging arcs off the lines at regular intervals with the dividers set to the planking thickness. A batten is then sprung to connect the high points of each arc and this gives the correct shape of the outside of the mold. There are many ways to construct the mold, but a solid lamination glued and screwed together worked well for us. Be sure to leave enough material inside of your line once cut to have a sturdy mold. After having a solid construction, flip it out of the way and start hammering the head of roofing nails along the line to be transferred. This is the same technique we use to make patterns for the backbone timbers. A little pressure and the head of the nail mark the boards.
Yeah, we got all our marks. A nail in each transfer mark will then allow you to spring a batten to mark your line. You typically want to use the stiffest batten that will take the curve, and we found that for the sharper curves, an old bandsaw blade worked really well. And then, just cut it out. We found if we were smart about how we screwed and glued the boards together, we could make a six-layered structure, cut out the shape, and then release the layers in three-ply sections to give us two halves. Now, they need to be joined, and this is the important part for later. A cross ball at the top will keep them from splaying out, and then we'll add two diagonals down to stiffen them up. Make sure the cross balls on each of the molds is exactly at the same height, in our case, LL4. This will help in standing them up on the keel. We inlaid and glued ours in for strength. Finally, add a gusset at the bottom to keep them together. And yeah, we had to make 13 of these, but we were lucky to have our new friend Dave come help Steve make the majority of them so that I could take time to work on videos. Once we had all the molds made and the backbone was stood up and leveled, it was time to erect all the molds. The boat's divided into 13 stations, stations 0 through 12, and those are all of our molds. So the molds get erected on a station line that goes along the backbone, and typically you would run a string, basically where we have this wire, and you would use a plumb bob and a level, and you would go through and level all of the molds and make sure that they're exactly where they need to be. We're about to put up the molds, and as you can see, we went a little high tech. So we picked up this laser here, and I don't know if I can get the cross or not. But anyways, it's projecting one horizontally and one vertically, and we have it shooting down the length of the boat from stem to stern. So now we can go through and line up all of our molds, and we put corresponding crosshairs on the molds. So we should just be able to line them up vertically and horizontally, shim or cut the bottom accordingly, and level them fore and aft. So hopefully putting up the molds will be a quick process, but unfortunately you can't see the laser this distance in our bright boathouse during the day. So we had to wait for the sun to go down and now we're going to try to do it as quick as we can so we don't piss off the neighbors by running impact guns at 11 o'clock at night. So let's get to it. We're here at uh, station number one up on the bow, and this one's a good example of what we went through assembling these molds and what the things we were looking for and trying to pay attention to. So if we look up at the cross ball, we can see the crosshairs that we drew. So when we had the laser level set up, we had to lift the mold up and move it fore and aft side to side and get it so that the crosshairs from the laser were right in line with those crosshairs on the cross ball. We found it was kind of tricky to keep this big heavy mold in line with the station line on this sloped timber and do all of that with just the two of us. So our solution was I went through and measured the angle for the station in relation to the top of the timber and I made these blocks that you can see. And they weren't so much of an issue along the keel timber where the angle was really mild but on the stem and stern they really made a big difference. So we could put the mold in between those and at least we didn't have to worry about whether it was sliding up and down the timber. And then we could just worry about fore and aft, port to starboard, and the height. Um, we found it was also easier to trim the molds to be just a little bit shy and then shim them up as opposed to putting them up, having to trim some off the bottom, taking them, putting them back up, going through that whole process.
the molds are made to a station on the boat. And when you erect the molds, it's very important to have them on the correct side of the station line. So uh, forward of midship, you want the molds to be aft or behind the station. And in the aft part of the boat, you want the molds to be forward of the station. And the reason for that is these molds are cut square and there's no bevel to them. So for station number one, we want it to be aft of the station line because all we care about is this one little strip here on the outer edge. And that's the only place that the rib band is going to touch. It's going to float on this inner part here. And that'll give us the correct width of the boat at that station. If we put it forward of the line, because of there not being a bevel, we would end up still riding on this edge, but we would end up, in our case, about two inches farther forward which would give us a bit wider of a boat at that point than we wanted or that was drawn. So it's really important to, to put those at the right portion on their station, whether they're fore and aft of it. And that's why we didn't have to worry about cutting bevels and it makes all of that really easy. And then when we spring the rib bands on, we just screw them into that corner where they touch and just keep them there. We don't try to pull them flat to the molds. You can see there's just this little bit of blocking on the bottom that's holding up the molds. And then we connected the molds fore and aft with some boards when we were putting them up. But it was all still a little bit wobbly. And we were really hoping that when we sprung these rib bands around it, that that would connect everything and tighten it all up. Um, but unfortunately, even when springing the rib bands, things were still too wobbly. Um, we couldn't get everything to hold exactly where we wanted it. If we pushed somewhere, somewhere else moved. So it was kind of, kind of frustrating and we really couldn't get it stable. And typically what folks recommend doing is putting um, bracing from the top of the molds up to a center ridge line that's attached to the trusses or the ceiling of a building. Unfortunately, our building isn't really sturdy enough to do that. Um, so it left us with really no other option. As you can see, we got the molds up and we started springing some rib bands. And the last few days have been really exciting to see all this come together and at the same time, really frustrating because we're trying to get the molds up and get everything level and lined up perfectly and get the rib bands sprung around them perfectly because right now we're defining the shape of the boat and any issues and accuracies here are going to come down to haunt us later down the road. Our issue is that everything's a little too loosey-goosey so if you go over and just push on the boat you can get it to rock back and forth a little bit and there's nothing really strong and secure that we can tie the molds or the boat back to since the whole boathouse is kind of ramshackly and whenever the wind blows it sways a little bit so that's not going to work. So what we've ultimately decided to do is put in the staging around the boat which is going to have to go in at some point. That'll go a long way towards tying the building together and keeping that from being so loose and moving and it'll give us something really solid and rigid to attach the molds to so that when we put the red bands on it's not pushing them all out of the way. So to do that, we've got to commit to pulling up the lofting floor, which we would rather not do for a little while, but unfortunately we can't set up the staging without taking the lofting floor up. So it's just one of those things. If you were doing this in a really awesome, solidly built shop, we would just put some uh, braces up to the rafters and call it a day, but unfortunately we don't have that. So I think this is how it's got to go.
So as we previously mentioned, as we were trying to wrap the rib bands around the molds, everything was moving and shifting too much, and we just couldn't get it to be stable enough that we could do it accurately. And that left us with no choice but to pull out the lofting floor and put in the staging. Once we built the staging, which connects the walls of the boathouse to each other, um, we had something really stable and really solid that we could then connect the molds to. So we went back and leveled the molds a little bit better and we put in these posts that are attached to the staging and that we connected to the tops of the molds. And once we did that and attached the bow and the stern also to the staging, everything became really rock solid. And if you want to move one of these, you end up moving the entire staging and the entire boat and it all just goes exactly right back to where it was. So for our purposes, that is plenty stable. And once we had the molds rigid, springing the rib bands was an absolute piece of cake for the most part. It's actually, it's amazing how much tension you have to put on these rib bands to bend them into place. I would say some places we were putting 50 or 60 pounds of force or more. Um, and by the time you multiply that to all of these rib bands all trying to pull apart, it makes sense why the molds are so heavy duty and why they're all glued and screwed and why we have these pretty wide and strong cross balls going across. Because right now the tension on this is, is kind of incredible. But now that everything's tied together and that we have the staging, it's great, everything's super solid, and that's also making the next chore of cutting the rabbit a lot easier. Because as I'm hammering away with the chisel and the adds on the keel timber and on the stem and stern, it's not moving, which is making fairing out the rabbit and doing all of that a lot easier than if things were moving around a little bit. So unfortunately we had to pull the lofting floor up. We still have it, we can still reference it. Worst case scenario, we can lay it out in the garage or the driveway and pull measurements from it. Um, but at this point, you know, what's here is here. We have the general shape of the boat and all the other fairing and intricacies like that we should be able to do by eye. So if all goes well, we, we might not even need the lofting floor again. Now that we've got the lofting floor pulled out and we got the staging put in and we've been working on cutting the rabbit, uh, the next thing is going to be to steam bend the frames, and we're doing that this weekend. And in the next video, we'll go into a lot more depth about what this rabbit is and how we cut it and how all that went down. We are two days from putting the frames in Arabella, and we've been going out straight. So you can see the rabbit's coming along here, the uh, port side's done, and we got a little bit more work here to do on the starboard. And we've got a mountain of frame stock that's almost down to its final milling. So this right now is two and three quarter by two and three quarter. We're gonna bring it down to two and a half by two and a half and then split them down the middle. And those will become our bent frames. Um, so we're doing that this weekend. This video goes live on Friday and Saturday and Sunday we'll be steaming. So if you are in the area and you'd like to check it out, feel free to stop on by. We are we have plenty of volunteers, we have plenty of labor, um, but you are more than welcome to come and spectate. It'll be a pretty cool thing going on. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for following, and we hope to see some of you this weekend.